Hi, this is Glenn at Switch Up. Today reviewing Breaks Are For Losers. Thank you to Playdeus for providing the review copy. One of my favourite gaming genres has always been racing games. Whether it's the whimsical and manic fun of series such as Mario Kart, the arcade action of Sega Rally or Ridge Racer, or the single screen, top-down racer sub-genre. Going right back to Super Sprint on the Commodore 64, to my personal favourite Super Off-Road on the Super Nintendo, or even hidden Wii Shop gem Drift Mania. So does this game match up to any of these greats? Let's find out. Breaks Off for Losers uses a cartoon style art type. There are eight different cars which all have their own style and a small variety of tracks that go from driving by the bay to driving on the moon. There is also both day and night racing. The tracks are all very bright and colourful, but the art style is very basic looking. Menus all look quite plain and the whole game just has that basic feel about it as far as the aesthetics go. I suppose the game has a certain charm to it, but the visuals certainly won't be blowing people away. Another issue is that it can be quite difficult to keep track on which car is yours when the action gets a little manic. I appreciate that a single screen racer needs to have a zoomed out camera in order to fit the whole track in, and as I've already mentioned I'm a big fan of this subgenre, but I struggled to see in this one a little too much at times. Graphics receives 12 out of 20. The music in Breaks Off for Losers did not make a good first impression with me. The main menu music is just about as random as it gets. Throughout the music track you will suddenly hear birds tweeting, what sounds like an electric drill and even someone sawing a piece of wood. It really is quite an odd choice. It reminded me of the music maker on Mario Paint, for those of you that remember that game. You used to be able to throw random sound effects together, and Mario would jump on each note to make your creation come to life. Once into an actual race though, the music does improve, and I quite enjoyed the moon level. As well as the ice level. There are crowd cheers and horn honks, and the music attempts to get the blood pumping. It's not the game's greatest feature for sure, but it does do the job, and it scores 12 out of 20. If there's one thing that will make or break a single screen top-down racer, then it's the controls. I have played quite a few of these over the years, and many of them make the fatal mistake of having controls that are way too slippery. You spend the whole race careening into corners, and feel like you are driving on ice. Thankfully, Breaks Are For Losers gets this part just right. The car feels weighty and the controls are very responsive. This means that turning around corners feels right. You will still slide and crash into a fair few corners, but that's more down to the breakneck manic action of the game as opposed to bad controls. Pressing left on either the left stick or the D-pad will make your car turn left, and pressing right makes your car turn right. Sounds like I'm stating the obvious here, but remember that you won't always be looking at your car from an angle that makes this seem obvious. A press of the A button gives you a boost, and the B button honks your horn. Strangely enough, in a game called Breaks Off for Losers, there is no brake button. It's very refreshing to find a low budget game that gets its controls just right. They are simple and responsive and receive 18 out of 20. Breaks Off for Losers has a few different game modes available. First of all, there are the challenges. This includes time trial type modes where you race around selected courses for a set amount of laps in order to try and beat a set time. It also includes perfect race mode which sees you having to complete laps without crashing for a set distance. There are one, two and three star or flag objectives to try and beat plus you can save ghost data and race against yourself as you try to improve your scores. You then have a quick race mode which sees you competing in races until you want to stop. The game will automatically load a new race for you each time, and you are awarded points after each race. You can customise these races by way of changing the AI of the computer cars, or whether to have items on the track, but also by changing the conditions for victory. This can be changed to having 60 seconds to race, and the person to have completed the most laps wins, the more traditional being first to reach a set number of laps, or last car standing. This mode sees cars incapacitated when their health bar depletes until there is only one car left. Finally, there is a championship mode. This is a standard set of races with points awarded for where you finish each race. 
the better your finish, the more money you earn, and you can then use this money to upgrade your car's handling, top speed, etc. There are pit stops available in races, and these refill your car's energy, plus give you back the free boosts that are available to you. There are also power-ups on the track, such as bombs and oil spillages, to name a few. The game supports up to 8 players, and while I could only try this out with 3 of us playing, we had a lot of fun and the game really shines with friends involved. This game has a lot going for it and receives 15 out of 20 for gameplay. The game costs £4.49 or $4.99. For this price you are getting a decent amount of play modes and a very fun party game. Get a few mates round and watch the noise level rise as contests get heated. The rounds are so quick that it doesn't matter if you are last, as it will be the next race in a moment's time. This is a good way of keeping everyone invested. Playing solo, the game is still fun, although better suited to short bursts of play. The computer AI is a bit hit and miss, and sometimes does very strange things, like pitting while in first meters from the finish line on the last lap, allowing you to snatch victory. These situations are a shame, but in all honesty, the races are so manic that you won't really notice a lot of the time. The tracks repeat a lot, but again, in a racer like this, where you are not taking in the sights or playing on the same track for 6 or 7 minutes at a time, I don't see this being as big an issue as it would be in other racers. The game is fun in single player and truly shines in multiplayer, plus is at a very fair price to boot and gets 50. To conclude, Breaks Are For Losers has a pick up and play quality to its gameplay that will appeal to some and can be a lot of fun with a few friends or family members. There are a pleasing amount of different game modes with the option to upgrade your car in between rounds a welcome one. This fun gameplay is also backed up with tight and responsive controls that allow the game's fun nature to shine through. If you can look past a bland presentation, then you may find a fun and manic little racer. Just go in expecting something that will be fun in short bursts or will be mainly played when people come round and your expectations will probably be met. Breaks Off for Losers receives a switch-up score of 72%.